الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel there are many blessings of reciting through the Pak from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, Aka sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, that the one who recites through the Pak, Salatul Nabi upon me, once, Allah Azza wa Jal sends ten mercies upon him. The one who recites Salat upon me ten times, Allah Azza wa Jal sends one hundred mercies upon him. And then whoever recites Salatul Nabi one hundred times, Allah Azza wa Jal writes between both of his eyes that he is free from hypocrisy and the fire of hell. And on the day of judgment, he will be raised with the martyrs. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is reported that Sayyidina Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu were busy doing some work for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the time for Asr Salah came close, Hazrat Sayyidina Farooq Azm radiallahu ta'ala asked Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala to lead the Asr prayer. Upon this, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala said, You are more deserving than me for this. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has given you preference over others and praised you. Upon hearing this, Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala replied, I will not surpass you because I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, How great is Usman. He is my son-in-law and the husband of two of my daughters. He, Allah Azza wa has gathered my nur in him. Subhanallah. Upon this, Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala said, I will not surpass you at all because I heard Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Allah has completed Islam through Umar. Therefore, you lead the prayer. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala says, I will not surpass you, as I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that even the angels are shy of Usman. Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala then said, No, I will not lead the prayers, as I will not surpass you, because I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, Allah has made the deen complete through Umar, and he has honored the Muslims. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala says, I will not surpass you. I will not lead the prayer. Because I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, Usman, he is the beloved of Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala then goes on, says, I will not surpass you. Because I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, how great is Umar. He looks after widows and orphans and brings food for them at the time when people are asleep. Hazrat Ibn Farooq radiallahu ta'ala replies, I will not lead the prayer. I will not surpass you. Because I've heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, Allah has granted forgiveness to Usman who prepared the army for the battle of Tabuk. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala then says, I will not surpass you. Because I have heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, Oh Allah, grant Islam dignity from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Moreover, the blessed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named you Farooq and Allah azza wa has distinguished between truth and falsehood through you. When this was narrated in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aka sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed for both of them and praised their courtesy and their excellent manners. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, in this parable we have many lessons to learn. First of all, look at the deep reverence and respect that the Sahaba Ikram had for each other. And Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala had for the great Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. The deep devotion, the recognition of the elevated ranks in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The respect 
the blessed Sahaba with the stars of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And for us, they were guiding lights, subhanallah. Today, my dear Islamic brothers, we are going to talk about an amazing, amazing companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. One who, on the 18th of Zul Hajj, was martyred, Allahu Akbar, in circumstances which were very horrific. But he was a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it was a very great test for him. Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu was truly a magnificent personality. He had the honor and the privilege of marrying two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, one after the other. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala was the third Khalifa and the leader of the Muslims. He came from a very wealthy family. And even before the advent of Islam, the Arabian Peninsula was such that the rich families dominated and the normal Bedouin struggled. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala who was with, from this rich clan, from this rich elite of the people. And these people enjoyed the luxuries of life and indulged in extravagance. They didn't have much respect for those beneath them. They committed all sorts of despicable and dishonorable acts. Even during the era of darkness and ignorance, and before Rasulullah brought this society out of the depth of darkness into the light of Islam, one man stood out even in that time. Despite being wealthy, Despite having power and influence, he did not indulge in any lewdness, any immoral acts. He was very modest and refrained from all wrong. He was generous beyond comprehension. He was simple and devoted his life to helping the needy. He never missed a chance to help the poor person. In that era of darkness, he led a life of distinct piety. Upon entering the fold of Islam, the great Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu became such a great asset for Islam. Indeed, it was the great Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu who brings this great personality into the fold of Islam. Blessed with the deen of Islam and the closeness to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu would go on to acquire titles and statuses which were amazing, which would be admired by the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the day of Qiyamah and beyond. Ghani was one of his titles. Zunnurain was one of his titles. His modesty was such that the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the angels feel shy when they see the piety of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala Allahu Akbar. And once he came into the fold of Islam, he would spend his wealth day and night in helping the Muslims, in freeing slaves. And during the day, he was constantly engaged in helping the Muslims. And at night, he would stand in the court of his Lord praying to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. He became a financial backer and the backbone of Islam. His clean heart was so amazing that he had no concern for worldly life. He had no concern for worldly pleasure. His life evolved around the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After accepting Islam, it wasn't easy for Hazrat Usman ibn radiallahu ta'ala. His own people turned against him. He was tortured. Difficulties were created for him. But he did not flinch one iota in the ghulami, in the servitude of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the oppression in Mecca reached high, high levels, he was ordered to migrate to Abyssinia with the daughter of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Ruqiyya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anha was truly amazing. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel. He 
bought. I use the word bought. Paradise from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam on two occasions. On the first occasion, what happened was there was a well and the owner of this well, a non-Muslim, would not let the Muslims drink from there. He sold the water to Muslims at very high price. A price which the Muslims could not afford. The Muslims complained to the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulallah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, water is scarce. There is this well, but this non-Muslim will not give us the water. And he's demanding high prices for it. The Muslims were distressed and upstood Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala he with the permission of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and bought this well and he bought it for a very high price a price that people could not even comprehend and then having bought the well he donated it to the Muslims for them to drink water from subhanallah subhanallah then Nabi Islamic brothers viewers of Madni channel Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala the second time the scholars write he bought Jannah narrated by Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Habbad radiallahu ta'ala I was in the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam the mercy to the universe and Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was making preparations for the battle of Tabuk Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala was there Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked for assistance, financial assistance to help the Muslim armies. And upstead Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I take it upon myself to donate 100 camels along with saddles and all of the provisions. Subhanallah. At hearing this, the embodiment of Nur, the dignified Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then carried on saying, who else is there? This is a battle for the Muslims. And again, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala stood up. He stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I bear responsibility for 200 camels and all the relevant provisions. The Sultan of the Worlds again was pleased with this and continued the efforts to gain more. And when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam made the announcement for the third time, the Muslims are there and who stands up again but the great Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He couldn't bear the fact that Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is actually asking for something and Usman stays quiet, it cannot be. He stands up again and he says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I take responsibility for 300 camels with all provisions. Everything that the army needs. At this, the narrator says, I saw that Mustafa Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam heard this and came down from the pulpit, from the mimbar sharif and proclaimed twice, from today, whatever Usman does, there will be no accountability about it. Allahu Akbar. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was so pleased with Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The scholars write that he bought now, from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jannat on this occasion. Subhanallah. Can you imagine the generosity? And let me share with you something more amazing than that. Commenting on this hadith of Mubarakah, Mufti Ahmad Yarhan alayhi rahmatul rahman has stated that bear in mind that this was just the announcement, but when it actually came to the time to give, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala actually ended up giving 950 camels 50 horses, 100 gold coins, and later on added another 10,000 gold coins. Subhanallah. And Mufti Sahib goes on to say, note that he, radiallahu ta'ala, initially committed only 100, then 200, then 300. So 600 in all. But when it came to giving the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he increased it many fold. Subhanallah. What an amazing personality. What an amazing hasti. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Can you imagine his status in the court of Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu sacrifices everything. 
he has at the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, today we are admiring the life of a great companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Today we are admiring how Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his life evolved around pleasing Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Let me share with you a beautiful waqia. Just to show the love that he had for Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Upon the advice of Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sent Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the Quraysh in Makkah, Mukarma, with the message of the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah. Many blessed companions felt envy of the fact that Hazrat Usman Ghani had the privilege of going to Makkah or Mukarma and now he was going to get the honor of visiting Baytullah, the house of Allah, and doing Tawaf Kaaba. When the blessed companions humbly expressed their feelings in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I believe Usman will not perform Tawaf of the Kaaba until we are surrounded. Blessed companions humbly asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he does not have any obstacle regarding it, then what will prevent Usman from the Tawaf of the Kaaba? So the Muslims have come to do Umrah, the Kuffar are stopping them, they stop at Hudaybiyah, the, the, the uh, negotiations are ongoing. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala is sent to Makkah and the companions are thinking that he's gone for the negotiations, but he will probably get the honor and the privilege of doing the, the, the Tawaf of the Kaaba. Now, in order to overcome this confusion of the blessed companions, the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, I believe he will not perform the tawaf of the Holy Kaaba without us. When Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala returned, the blessed companions asked him, O oh Abu Abdullah, you will be feeling relaxed after performing the tawaf of the Kaaba. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of the Madni channel, listen to the reply that Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala gave. He said, you have made an inaccurate judgment about me. Then the words he said were these. He said, by the one in whose power my life is, if I had lived in Makkah al even for the entire year, I would never have performed the Tawaf without the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa even if the Quraysh didn't obstruct me from doing so. Allahu Akbar. Look at the love he had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, it was that love of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that made Hazrat Usman Ghani reach feats of excellence and ranks of excellence which even to this day are beyond our comprehension. Such an amazing companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who, Allahu Akbar, was so, so blessed that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Islam gained so much through him. The Holy Quran was compiled by him. SubhanAllah. Many different benefits the Muslims enjoyed through him. Allahu Akbar. We've heard about the time of Hudaybiyah. Let me share with you another beautiful narration. SubhanAllah. In the Khilafat of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala the lands became dry and there was a famine in Medina. The people of Medina struggled to find something to eat. And they came to the court of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and asked, During this period, Hazrat Usman Ghani, who was a businessman, had ordered a caravan, a shipment of food and other goods, 70 camels, the scholars write. All the rich merchants of the city gathered to the house of Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they said that you have got this huge shipment which is coming at a time of great demand. Now we all know how financial markets and business works. The more the demand, the higher the prices. So the, the, these businessmen think that if we could buy of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala of the shipment of food, even if it's expensive, we can then sell it to the Muslims and make a lot of money. So with the mindset of making a profit, they come and they say, we'll give you double what you've paid. He says, no. He said, we'll give you triple. He says, no. 
they go very far and make him different offers. But Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala says, that is not enough. I have been offered tenfold. Amazed by this, the businessmen say, you've been offered tenfold? Who has offered you tenfold? And the great Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala says, my Allah has offered me tenfold. For every one Allah Azza wa Jal rewards with ten. He takes the entire shipment of food and provisions and he distributes it amongst the Muslims of the city. Subhanallah. This was the great Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. Under his Khilafat, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, different parts of the world were con conquered. There were many, many tests and tribulations, many difficulties for him. And Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu was martyred in his own home. Times became so difficult that Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu sends Hasinan Kariman to guard his house. For 40 days the scholars write that water was stopped from him. In the plains of Karbala we know that there was no water. Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala if you read the books of history, for our sake, for the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put up with great hardships. And at the time that the people broke into his house and martyred him, he was actually reading the ayats of the Qur'an and he was martyred whilst reading the Qur'an. Allahu Akbar. The Qur'an will testify that that's what he was doing at the time of his death. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, Sayyidina Abu Kilaba radiallahu ta'ala said, I saw a person in the land of Sham, Syria, who was repeatedly proclaiming, Oh, regret for me, there is hell. I stood up and went over to him, and I was astonished to see that both of his hands and his feet had been severed, and he was blind in both eyes. He was lying on the ground with his face and his mouth towards the ground, saying the same thing over and over again. Oh, regret for me, there is hell, there is hell. I asked him, oh man, why? And for what reason are you saying this? When he heard me, he replied, oh, you who asks, do not ask of my condition. I am from those unfortunate people who entered the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in order to martyr him. His wife radiallahu ta'ala anhu has scolded me when I reached near him with my sword, I slapped the honorable lady in anger. Seeing this, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu raised his hands in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal and said, yeah, May Allah cut your hands and your feet, make you blind and cast you into hell. And oh man, seeing the expression on the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu and hearing his dua, my hair bristled in terror and I ran away trembling in fear. Out of the four du'as Amir al-Mu'mineen made, Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala's du'as have been accepted and three of those have come to pass. My hands and feet have been severed and I am blind in both eyes. And I know only the last du'a remains and I will burn in hell. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, the great Sayyidina, Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu left many pearls of wisdom for us and there were many lessons. But the greatest was that he sacrificed everything at the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we run after wealth and we try to satisfy the desires of our nafs and we try to satisfy what khwaishat we, we have and the hopes we have. But look, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala he had great wealth he was rich but he used his wealth to please Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gosh can we use our wealth we use our time to please Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today it is a shame that when we are poor or we're struggling to make ends meet we are more religious but when we start to become richer and money comes in, we start to lose our ways and we start to lose our modesty. And the richer we get, 
the more immodest we become, immoral we become. And the more we start to indulge in sins. This is not the way of thanking Allah Azza wa Jal. The way of thanking Allah and his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam for not only the treasure of Iman, but also the treasures of the world was to sacrifice these in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. And every time you use the blessings of Allah to thank him, this was the great lesson from the life of Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And you heard that even before the announcement of Islam, he was modest and pious and honorable. Today, our wealth is making us dishonorable. It is the very reason we are committing sins. Isn't it a shame on us that when we were poor, struggling to make ends meet, we were praying five times a day, and yet when we became rich and wealthy, namaze bi jati rahi, roze bi jati rahi, it's a great shame. If you look at the life of Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you will realize that throughout his life, he gave to the poor and he helped Islam. But nowhere in the books of history will it say that he ever ran out of money. Why? Because he was sacrificing his wealth in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you sacrifice your wealth, your time and your desires in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not only will your ranks be raised and the quality of your life improve, but also your wealth will increase as well. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the tawfiq to learn from the life of the great Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ameen. Ijahin Nabi Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ajarni afimam Madina to Karbala A journey of Imam Medina to Karbala